Good morning, everyone. I see several people are getting online this morning. We're opening up a little early so that everyone can join us and not uh, come on after the algorithm is letting people on a little bit late. Uh, today's morning prayer service, uh, well, it begins on page 77 in the Book of Common Prayer if you're using a prayer book or on your service leaflet at the top of page 1. We're wrapping up the season of Easter now. We have a few minutes before we actually uh, begin the liturgy. Today in the calendar, we commemorate uh, St. Dunstan. I'll say a little bit about something about him uh, later in the uh, liturgy. Uh, St. Dunstan's is one of our sister parishes in our convocation, and so I think it's worth mentioning who that uh, saint of God is in the church. So we commemorate his life and legacy. Just a few more minutes. I'm not sure why I'm not seeing uh, everyone come on. Ah, oh, there we go. Hey, Laura. Good morning. As I was saying earlier, we're coming on live so that people have a chance to join us and be prepared before we actually begin the liturgy. So we'll do that right at the top of the hour at 9 o'clock. It is an amazingly beautiful day today. I hope the rain has ended at least for today. Bob Daniels is watching. Hey, Bob. Good morning. <laughs> Mary Ann, how are you this morning? Good morning. Just a few more seconds and we will begin uh, right to of morning prayer. Morning prayer begins today on page 77 in the Book of Common Prayer or at the top of your service leaflet. Glad you've joined us at Holy Innocence Episcopal Church to uh, open the day with prayer and praise and a little bit of scripture reflection uh, as we move forward throughout the day. If you have your prayer books, turn to page 77 or the top of your service leaflet. I have nine o'clock, so we're going to begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We continue today with the Invitatory and Psalter on, beginning on page 80. Page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Continue now with the Antiphon for Easter. Let's say that together. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our, our invitatory psalm is the one found on page 83, Christ our Passover. Page 83, Christ our Passover. Together, Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. 
Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 78, part 1. It's a very long psalm, and thank goodness we're only reading uh, part 1 and not the entirety of the psalm. Uh, we'll read it. It's a teaching or a uh, remembering of God's salvation for the children of Israel. So we'll say this psalm together. We'll take it a little bit slower. Psalm 78, part 1. That is verses, if you're in a Bible and not in a prayer book, verses 1 through 39. 1 through 39. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God but keep his commandments, and not be like their forefathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in the law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff and the waters gushed out like rivers. But they went on sinning against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They tested God in their hearts, demanding food for their craving. They railed against God and said, Can God set a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock, the waters gushed out, and the gullies overflowed. But is he able to give bread or to provide meat for his people? When the hurt Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob, and his anger mounted against Israel. For they had no faith in God, nor did they put their trust in his saving power. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels, he provided for them food enough. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and led out the south wind by his might. He rained down flesh upon them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their dwellings. So they ate and were filled, for he gave them what they craved. But they did not stop their craving though the food was still in their mouths. So God's anger mounted against them. He slew their strongest men and laid low the youth of Israel. In spite of all this, they went on sinning and had no faith in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, 
they would seek him and repent and diligently search for God. They would remember that God was their rock and the Most High God their Redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him, and they were not faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their sins and did not destroy them. Many times he held back his anger and did not permit his wrath to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that goes forth and does not return. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Our first lesson appointed for today comes from the book of Leviticus, the 26th chapter, the first 20 verses. Leviticus 26, 1 through 20. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, You shall make for yourselves no idols, and erect no carved images or pillars. And you shall not place figured stones in your land to worship at them, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths, my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you follow my statutes and keep my commandments and observe them faithfully, I will give you your rains in their season, and the land shall yield its produce, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall overtake the vintage, and the vintage shall overtake the sowing. You shall eat your bread to the full and live securely in, the, in your land, and I will grant peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and no one shall make you afraid." I will remove dangerous animals from the land, and no sword shall go through your land. You shall give chase to your enemies, and they shall fall before you by a sword. Five of you shall give chase to a hundred, and a hundred of you shall give chase to ten thousand. Your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. I will look with favor upon you and make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will maintain my covenant with you. You shall eat old grain long stored, and you shall have to clear out to make to clear out the old to make way for the new. I will place my dwelling in your midst, and I shall not abhor you, and I will walk among you and will be your God, and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be their slaves no more. I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk erect. But if you will not obey me and do not observe all these commandments, if you spurn my statutes and abhor my ordinances so that you will not observe all my commandments and you break my covenant, I in turn will do this to you. I will bring terror on you, consumption and fever that waste the eyes and cause life to pine away. You shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. I will set my face against you, and you shall be struck down by your enemies. Your foes shall rule over you, and you shall flee, though no one pursues you. And if in spite of this you will not obey me, I will continue to punish you sevenfold for your sins. I will break your proud glory, and I will make your sky like iron and your earth like copper. Your strength shall be spent to no purpose. Your land shall not yield its produce. And the trees of the land shall not yield their fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the first reading is Canticle 18. It's found on pages 93, on page 93 in the Book of Common Prayer, or on the middle of page 2 in your service leaflet. We'll say Canticle 18 together. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, 
language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's Gospel reading, our second lesson, comes from Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 18 through 23. Matthew 13, 18 through 23. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, and another sixty, and in another thirty. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle in response to the second lesson is Canticle 19. It's found on page 94 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 94. Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed. We'll say this together. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I do want to say just a few words about this gospel reading and then about the commemoration for today. I read the regular readings for, for morning prayer for today and not the readings associated with Dunstan, because I think there's something interesting in this gospel lesson from, the, from Matthew. It's his version of the uh, sower, the parable of the sower found in both Mark, Luke, and Matthew. They each tell the story in slightly different ways. And this is the response Jesus gives to the disciples after having told the parable to the crowd. And sometimes I hear preachers, or have in the years past, hear preachers talk about this parable as a way of looking at how either the Christian gospel has been received or rejected in the world. And I think maybe a more interesting way to think about this gospel passage is to think about it as the way in which we, in, we embrace the Word of God, the gospel and the teachings of both Old and New Testaments in our Christian journey. That sometimes the soil of our lives is different. Sometimes it's dry and parched, sometimes it's rocky, sometimes it has weeds growing in it, and sometimes it has been turned and is fruitful and open to hearing the word. So that at different times in our journeys, we are able to either grasp everything we need to know about how to be faithful, and at other times we find that we are in that place where our, well, our soil is kind of parched or it's weedy or it has things going on in it. We're distracted by so many things in our lives. And right now in this time of, uh, well, this pandemic we're living through, it's easy to be distracted and not pay attention to God in our lives, to all the wonderful things that are happening in spite of where we are in this weird, upside-down, crazy, topsy world. 
you know, about social distancing and how we are able to live together in community and be yet, you know, homebound or dispersed or not able to be with each other the way we always have been before. So maybe it's time to spend some extra time reading God's Word, spend some extra time as we're doing this morning in prayer and praise and in reflection, spend some extra time reading, you know, some of the great classics of either literature or spirituality, things that lift us up from where we are so that we can have that kind of soil that's been turned and made ready and can capture the seed, the Word of God, and bear fruit in our lives. St. Dunstan, whose day we commemorate, was a saint who lived just before the, the turn of the first millennium. Uh, he was born, I think, around 1908 and lived until nine, excuse me, 908 and lived to about 988, if my memory is correct. Um, he was an abbot. He was the abbot of Glastonbury Cathedral, one of the great monastic houses in England. He was later, he was also not just a monk, but a priest, and later became a bishop of several different sees, ultimately the Archbishop of Canterbury. And one of the things he championed in England was that religion, or I would say the word faith, had a place in the public square. That faith should be, it go hand in hand, both with politics, with arts, with labor. It should always be part of the fabric of society, that faith has the way in which it raises up people. And it wasn't, I think, his intent that one faith had to dominate, although I do think that that's probably the, the times in which he lived, but that faith itself was what buoyed us up. It helped the artist be a better artist, the politician be a better politician, the laborer, whether that person was a person who toiled the fields or was a person who was a doctor or a lawyer or a homemaker, whatever the labor was, we were called to be faithful. It really does tie back to the lesson we hear from Matthew's Gospel this morning, that we need to keep our lives fertile so that we can bear fruit in whatever circumstance God places us. So I hope you'll remember St. Dunstan today and his legacy of uplifting all labor to the glory of God. We continue now with the Apostles' Creed. Gosh, the Apostles' Creed. If I can turn to my page in the prayer book, I can give you the page number. is on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer or page 3 of your service leaflet. Let us proclaim our faith using this ancient creed of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We continue now with the prayers on page 97. 97 or in your service leaflet on page 4. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Continuing with the suffrages, show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. 
Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the day is the Collect for the sixth Sunday of Easter. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Continuing now with a collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our third collect, the collect for mission, is the one found on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer, or at the bottom of page 4 in your service leaflet. We say this collect together. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you the honor of your name. Amen. Continuing now with the prayer or the litany in the time of coronavirus, our response in the litany, if you don't have a leaflet, is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer is the response. For all who have contracted coronavirus, we pray for care and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are particularly vulnerable, we pray for safety and protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who experience fear or anxiety, we pray for peace of mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For affected families who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety, we pray for policies that recognize their plight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who do not have adequate health insurance, we pray that no family will face financial burdens alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are afraid to access care due to immigration status, we pray for recognition of the God-given dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for shared solidarity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For public officials and decision makers, we pray for wisdom and guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, during this time, may your church be a sign of hope, comfort, and love to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. Amen. Before we continue with the general thanksgiving found on page 101 in the prayer book, I ask you to take a moment and lift up to God those cares and concerns that weigh heavy on your heart and minds. Remembering today all those who continue to work on the front lines during this pandemic, for those who offer their lives in service to others. We remember them before God. Together we say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation preservation, 
and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. I hope you will join us tomorrow uh, at Holy Innocence Episcopal Church Facebook page to once again worship together in morning prayer. The Reverend Kenya Thompson uh, is leading prayer services tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. So I hope you have a very blessed day. See you, see you again. Bye-bye.